say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. We're outside. We are finally. You know what? We have tried to shoot out here for weeks. Mm -hmm. Rain, thunderstorms, lightning, heat, UFOs, <laughs> everything in the world's That's going right. on out of here. That's right. Stray alligators, everything. Wow. Finally, we got out here. We got jackets on. It's fall. Got a fire. Got a fire. It's wonderful. <laughs> Hopefully, it blows that way. The wind's out of the east today, so it's exactly opposite what it is, but we're going to make do. Tonight, we want to talk about cooking outside. It is very easily done. We have a setup over here. We basically have our fire about 11 or 12 inches off the ground. We are using our ash trees that have perished. Yes. You can use oak. You'll have a little more flavor with white oak. You can use hickory if you really want some good flavor. But this is just for heat. When you think about cooking outside, think about this. It's just like a stove. When you get too much heat, what do you do? You turn the heat down. We have a little thing we call a snake. We can take it and put it back on or off. If you have a part of your fire that's a little hotter than others, you can pull your skillet or your cooking utensil on the hot part, off the hot part. That's the same as turning your heat up or down. So cooking outside is not that difficult. Now back in the 1800s, every cowboy had his had one of those? laser pointer to figure out exactly what that heat was. This is handy to have if you're cooking outside. So that being said, you can cook just about anything outside that you can inside. If you want to cook something in the oven, ba-ba, that's a Dutch oven. The same thing applies. Heat on top, heat on the bottom, convection. You have cooked some wonderful desserts in there. We've cooked bread, everything you can cook inside, you can cook outside. Tonight, we have caught some catfish. One of the easiest fish in the world to catch we're going to cut this up in small size chunks and we're going to make us something excellent. Now you could use cod, you could use bass, you could use bluegill, you could use any sort of firm fleshed fish. Now remember this is going to shrink up just a little bit but I'm going to cut some nice bite sized pieces. All right so I'm going to take some cornmeal, let's say equal parts cornmeal and flour and I'm going to mix it up. I think I got about three quarters of a cup of each here because we're just making this for us. We're gonna mix that up. And then I'm gonna come back with my favorite Cajun seasoning and some smoked paprika. Now I'm just gonna look according to color. That's about, oh, let's see. That's about three quarters of a tablespoon. I'm not seeing enough color. Uh oh. Isn't this scientific? This is very scientific. And not another one. Now the funny thing is, now that's got some cayenne. And you know, when you cook this and you fry this, you don't taste all that cayenne. You notice I'm not complaining? Because yeah. I know that. <laughs> but isn't it funny that, yeah. that how it kind of cooks mm -hmm. it out? Huh? Put now just if you sprinkled little... it at the end, I'd be like yes, screaming. Yes, it'd be, it'd be a whole right. different story. Right. But it cooks it in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put, okay, what was it? Two and a half well, right. tablespoons? Just gonna you know it's it. You know, you know exactly. Right. Most of the time when I'm looking at that and I'm talking to somebody, uh, there's my fish batter. Mm -hmm. It's not a batter. That's right. And I do it all the time. It's breading. It's mm -hmm. dry. That's okay. You can call it. That's what you okay. Want. That's right. But that technically is a breading. Mm -hmm. But again, my whole life. It's your batter. Can't that's help okay. it. I call that's it the right. rest of my life. All right, look what we got here. Look what we got here. Now I'll tell you what we're gonna do to make sure that sticks on there. Give me my egg wash. I put a little buttermilk in there for you. Oh, that's beautiful. So what I've done in this pan, now you can tell I've just got a little bit of oil in here, and that's olive oil. And again, the smoke point is okay. I'm not going to get it real hot. I am not going to get this real hot. You don't have to get things blistering hot to cook it right. I'm going to go put this over my fire right now. 
All right, I guess we should uh, get the cat out of the bag here. Yes, we should. We're making catfish tacos. Yummy. With some southern sides. Now we got some okra here from our buddy Mac. We're just gonna cut the tops off of that. And we're gonna cut these up into, I don't know, three quarter inch maybe. You like that little knife, don't you? I do like that little knife. For the one arm dude, it works well. Okay, I'm just gonna dip my catfish in the batter. Ready. <laughs> See? I'm teasing you. <laughs> See what I do? Yes. That's okay, I know what you mean. It is okay. Now you can use the egg wash depending on how moist your catfish. You don't have to pick up a whole lot of that. You're gonna get some seasoning on there. I save it for the okra. And I wanna, exactly, I wanna save my, my egg wash for the breading. Breading, good job. Not the batter. <laughs> we're dipping. We're running our catfish through our breading. The breading. And we're gonna drop it in. All right, since you got the gloves, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set that off to the side. Our catfish is about done. If you will put these in the egg wash and then into the same batter. Just roll it, I can just pour them in. Breading. Breading, into your breading. It'll become I'll be better. I'll the rest of my life. I right. cannot stop. And then we have another skillet heating up. I'll be right back. Now, okra can get kind of, uh, What's the word for it? It can get kind of gooey as you pull them apart. You want to set these separate on a tray. Make sure they don't stick together before you put them in the frying pan. And I don't know, man, there's something about fried okra. Love and this it. is the same, okay, I'm saying it, breading. <laughs> same breading that we're using for the catfish. Works very well. Cooking outside over an open flame is just good common sense. People did this for a lot of years. We're gonna bring this to a golden brown. Look at that. Now again, this is olive oil. I checked the temperature on this a minute ago. This oil is under 300 degrees. You do not have to get oil up to 375 degrees to fry anything. If you keep that oil, especially olive oil, below that smoke point, you're gonna retain some of the health benefits, believe it or not. This is almost guilt-free frying. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, there's one thing missing here. What's missing? Remoulade. Okay, this is a, another southern elegant dish here, I think. All right, what we've got here is probably, I don't know, a teaspoon or two of our sweet pickle juice. I'm gonna come in with some mayonnaise. Yummy. I'm gonna come in, I don't know, with, mm, I've never measured this before. That's like four heaping teaspoons. About, tablespoons, about I mean, that. Four heaping. We can come in with some hot sauce about, a lot of hot oh, sauce. I don't know. It's, That's enough hot sauce, don't you think? It won't make it hot, I promise. Whatever. Now we're gonna come in with some Cajun seasoning of your choice and some smoked paprika. Remoulade is what you like. There's so many interpretations of that out there. Some people actually use curries. There's all kinds of things that you can put in there. Something I like is a little bit of horseradish. Yep. Ooh, I love horseradish. horseradish. It's gonna have a little heat to it. From that's... different areas. Two teaspoons. This least. is the color that I like. It. You got the sweet of the mayonnaise. I try. You've it. got. Woo! That's good. That's <laughs> that's, that's good. Now that's that's the horseradish. That's too, good though. though. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. No more. No more of that. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. Ooh, you're it. gonna love it. You're gonna love oh, it. Oh man! So here's what we're gonna do. Ooh. We got to get busy here because yes. we cannot. Things are gonna get cold. Now I want you to look right here. Take that and dip in that. I already that stole in the one. I stole one. So did Kelly. Mm, look at that. Oh, I could just eat that for dinner. Mm. Well, I wish we had more. Why don't we make that more often? I know. We should. So if you will, let's load this guy up. 
And I just washed my hands last Thursday, so mm -hmm. we're good to go. Plenty. Here. So let's so load those leaves up. Do you think we should give Kelly one? Yeah, make her one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, now some of these things you're gonna want and some of these things you aren't gonna want. I think you'll probably say hold on the jalapenos. Yes, I will. <laughs> but we're gonna take just a simple slaw and you can use our lunch lady recipe if you like. Making a coleslaw on the mandolin. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. We have cabbage all over the yeah. kitchen. It's and it's, we're making a mess, but I'll, it's a, it's it's a worth beautiful, it. beautiful right. mess. To me, this is just the easiest way to do it. Fresh. I got on my serrated edge, I guess you could call it, on the mandolin. Some of these old time recipes, you know, you get from somebody else and you kind of doctor them to, to get them like you want them. I remember going somewhere, and I can't remember where it was, but this lady had the best coleslaw I'd ever eaten in my life. And I said, can you tell me that recipe? And she said, I would tell you, but I'd have to kill you. <laughs> and so I kind of, you know, I kind of laughed and kind of hung my head because it was really good stuff. And she came up, she said, I'm going to tell you something. She said, I was a lunch lady for a lot of years. Then she said, I cook for this little cafe down the road. She said, this is my top secret recipe. And this has been so long ago. So you're allowed to give it out now. I'm allowed to give it out now All because right. the because uh, it's public domain now. It's after 70 years. Okay. <laughs> so anyhow, this was her lunch lady recipe. And I like a little mustard in mine. Mm -hmm. There's a restaurant down in the western part of the state that serves barbecue. They got good you know I'm talking salsa. about? Yes, I do. They have mustard in it. I like that. Yes. So I'm going to give you the secret recipe. Now some people like a vinegar base, mm -hmm. slaw. So I like mayonnaise base. So if you're gonna do a great big head, this wasn't a huge head of cabbage, you're gonna need two cups of mayonnaise. You need equal parts, a third cup of sugar and a third cup of white vinegar. Now, if you don't have white vinegar, you can use sweet pickle juice or mm -hmm. dill pickle juice. Yeah. Top secret. Now, I like a little mustard, so that's probably a tablespoon of mustard just to get a little bit yellow. You can right. use some mustard seed too. Some people use celery seed. So, we're gonna take some carrots, some fresh carrots, Put these in here. That always makes me nervous because I've left a little bit of hide in there. Have you ever done that? <laughs> yes, I don't ah! like it. I'm being careful. Let's see what you got. Right, Love it. I'll dump that in. A little bit more. Oh yeah, we need some more carrot. Now this is obviously with the sugar and the vinegar. It's gonna be a sweeter coleslaw. Mayonnaise based. That's just the way I like it. That's the way Nikki likes it. Nice. A lot of times when we serve this to folks, they say, that's the best coleslaw I ever had. And so every time they say that, I thank the lunch lady. That's right. So there's our base. That's right pretty. That Very does pretty. look pretty. Now, the original recipe calls for two cups of mayonnaise. That's our great big head of cabbage. I don't know that we'll use all that, but let's try to add everything accordingly Ready? and see where we go. All right. So there's your third of sugar. And that's your third of white vinegar. And a whisk makes it nice. And let's not forget our mustard. mustard. If you like that sort of thing. Some people do, some people don't. But that's the base of the recipe. You'll have a great coleslaw right there. Now see how it gets that little yellow look there? Oh, oh. that reminds me of that restaurant. You know what I'm talking about. I do. It starts with a K, but has an N sound. Mm. That's all I'm going to oh, say wow. about that. That's good. Very yummy. Now, I want you to look at that. Is that not like what you buy in the store? Perfect. Uh -huh. Beautiful. We're going to try to keep you from going to the store at all. You That's keep right. just doing everything at your house That's and you right. don't even need the store. All right, Miss Farmer. So let's see what we got. How much you want in here to start? That looks like a good start. Good let's start. See where we go from there. Now that looks like any store bought brand you can buy. That tastes good, I taste it. It does. And it smells good. It depends on how much you want in here. Some people like there's a little dry, some people like there's soupy. I don't want mine soupy, but every bite I want to have some in there. I want to be able to taste that sauce. Is that perfect? It's perfect. Southern Lunch Lady Coleslaw. I like it. Look at there. Beautiful. Let's put that in a, in a new bowl. Now, we want to put this in a container. We can reseal it. Put it in the refrigerator, because I'm sure we won't eat all this tonight. Even though... You might. I can get a good head start on it. I like celery seed. I'm going to top that off with I like a little it. bit of celery seed. Does that look beautiful? It looks beautiful. Mm, mm, mm. So there's our basic coleslaw recipe. It's delicious. Yes. But if you want to tang it up just a bit, Take your peppers, 
cut them up just a little bit, pop those in, mix them up. Oh, remember our cowboy candy we just made? Now we're gonna take our cowboy candy. We're gonna just Looks toss pretty. that in, mix it up. And it's just a nice little addition. Is that not beautiful, Mrs. Varma? That is beautiful. Mm, 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 mm. Coming in with that, and I'm coming in hot. Keep mine coming in cool. <laughs> so, a little bit of slaw on each one of these. A little remoulade. Oh, are you kidding me? Go little on mine. Okay, just a little bit. Just a dash. <laughs> Kelly likes it hot like you. A little bit here, a little bit there. And I'm gonna do a couple jalapenos. That was mine, uh-oh. Uh-oh. There you go. Looky, looky, looky. Looky, looky, looky. That's very pretty. It's too pretty to eat. It is. Look at that. I'll eat it then. You take something like an old ugly catfish. Look, look, here. Here's some catfish we caught recently. We cut them up, put them in a the freezer. And then you bring it home and you turn it into a, a work of art like that. Mm-hmm. You want to go first? I do. And I'm going to have one more piece of okra. Mm, look at that. Now look oh. at that. You say you can't cook. We have people all the time, well, I can't try that. Yes, you can. Look what we did over an open fire in the middle of nowhere. That's a great you appetizer. You can do that. Appetizer. All right, I'm a, can I try one? Yep. Can you, yeah, put them on mine. Do you want mine. those? Put them on mine. I eat them. You're, I ain't scared. Those aren't, those aren't real hot. Mm -hmm. You want to try it together? Yeah, ready? It's going to be really noisy. Kelly, cut the, cut the noise. Wow. Mm. The fish, the mm. catfish is amazing. Mm. 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 You know what? We need to go fishing. We need to stock up. Yes, we do. This, this is, is really good. actually kind of extraordinary. Very good. So we've already tried the okra, obviously. We need to eat this. We're going to turn the cameras off just for a second so Kelly can eat hers. And then we're going to make you some dessert. Be right back. Listen right now. In the fall, the crickets, the katydids, mm -hmm. In the heat of summer in the early spring, it's wrong, wrong, wrong. Now it's like, <laughs> they're cold. I'm so tired. <laughs> but you know what? I'm fascinated by insects around here on the farm. Here's something I did recently. Went down below the house, and there was a garden spider. You know, they get to be that big around. It was huge. Something I've always done. I posted this on Facebook. I would always take like a grasshopper or a bumblebee or whatever and throw in the gates. And I did that here too. I didn't yeah. say that I fed her, but I did. Yeah, she was your So pet. I took a bumblebee. And I kind of flipped him and kind of knocked him silly. Threw him in the head, boom, she got him. Watch this. So, I love to watch nature, and here on the farm we see a lot of it. We had funnel spider out front. I don't like those. Just one funnel spider. So it, was, it built in the cactus. So she went all Charlotte's Web on me. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, it looks like Halloween out here. We got funnel spiders <laughs> everywhere on every bush, so I have to clean them off every day. So anyhow, one more spider story. This is serious. So the other day, I had two shoes on the back porch. Mm -hmm. Went to get in my shoes the other day. I thought I'd better knock them out. So I knocked one out, Black Widow came out. I thought, okay, that's kind of creepy. Took my other shoe, knocked it out, a brown recluse. That's nice. Tap your shoes out yeah. because these spiders are more common than you think. So we made a wonderful dinner. We did. Why don't we make a wonderful dessert? A good idea. So what are you gonna make, Mrs. Farmer? Well, something quick and easy. So if you were camping and you just want something to eat and you got some blackberries laying around, you could do this really simple. This is entry level stuff. Yes. Anybody can do this. And a lot of times when we're out cooking on the road or you got your Dutch oven with you, we'll bring some instant stuff, a cake right. mix or a can of biscuits or something like that. This is exceptionally good. And you did bring a can of biscuits. I did, it's quick and easy. How do you do it? Well, I had, we had six ounces of the black blackberries in our fridge. So I took a quarter cup of sugar. Okay. We're gonna add this. Some people like to let this sit for 45 minutes to get all like runny. We're gonna have solid sugar. You good with that? 
I can dig it. Sugar. All right. And we got head biscuits. I just had some of those large biscuits, which makes it easy if you're on the road or camping or you're just hungry and you want it right now. I'm just going to roll them out a little bigger. You could make your own dough if you wanted, but that's, that's I'm lazy to do. Hey, let me ask you a question. Yeah. In the summertime when we're cooking out here, yeah. you complain a lot about that fire. I'm liking it tonight. Huh? It's keeping me warm. <laughs> now, this would be something that would be absolutely fun if you're sitting around with your kids and they want to make something easy. Oh, yeah. Now, if you don't have this kind of rig right here, you can very easily take and rig you up an old grill top. Take it, I mean, one that you're actually still using for a grill, and you can just kind of prop it up about 12 inches. Use your brick, some kind of stone, and just prop it up, build your little fire, and you're good to go. Not perfect circles, but what do you think? I think it's fine. All right, how much you want in here? Just enough. I'm gonna put four in each, how's that? Does that sound fine. good? That's, that's wonderful. All right, all right. And I'm gonna fold these over. Uh -huh. This is what you call a quick pot. And this is basic. I mean, how basic is this? You got dough, sugar, and fruit. That's right. You talk about entry level. All right, I'm gonna do the fork here. Make them look all pretty. All right, they're ready. All right, let's, let's go. Drop them in. Let's drop Let me in. check my oil. All righty. These turn brown surprisingly fast. Ooh, looks yum. I don't know. I mean, that's uh, simple southern elegance. Quick. You decorate so nicely. You really do. Do you realize I've got a flare. You do have a flare. <laughs> I don't know if I can eat it. I just want to sit here and stare at it. I'll eat it then. You look and watch. Look what happens when you just put a little bit of sugar mm -hmm. on a little bit of blackberry and you just let it set for like five minutes. Yeah. And that's what's going on inside of there too. Mm -hmm. Just a little confectioner sugar, a little bit of mint, and you got yourself uh, something you can stare at for like an hour before you eat it. That's true. So, let's start the clock. One hour, we'll take a bite. Or maybe right now. You grab yours, I grab... Oh, feel that? Doesn't wow. that feel wonderful? Oh, my word. <laughs> That's better than a donut. You know, sometimes... Oh, wow. <laughs> sometimes you can do too much. First of all, blackberries are amazing. When you add just the sugar, mm. just the sugar, mm -hmm. And you let the sugar and the blackberry, the tartness of that, go along with that buttery dough. What else do you need? The biscuit is what makes it too. I like that better than pie dough. Mm. It's simpler. That is so good. Mm. Maybe we do need to make a bunch more. Mm. 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 You know what? I wish we had some fresh cherries. Ooh. You know what I just did? I didn't just taste it. I'm gonna say the whole thing. I know you did. I didn't mean to do that. I know you gotta you gotta stop and take a break and then we'll finish it. How's that? <coughs> Mrs. Farmer. <laughs> I was being a little piggy. Yes, you were. I was watching you though. You know what? I, I just noticed something. I looked at my watch. Mm -hmm. And I noticed our half hour's up. Uh-oh. That's sad. Yeah. But that being said, what happens uh, when our half hour is close to being up? I, I start thinking about things. I thought, okay, if somebody walked up to you, and the very nice I said, Mrs. Farmer. Mm -hmm. Where can I find your recipes? What would you tell them? I tell them timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Been there? Mm -hmm. There's actually 250 million recipes wow. on there. Wow, you counted those? Counted them. Wow. Also, we have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We talk to our buddies out there and we talk about food. We talk about all kinds of fun stuff, but it's difficult. It is. What do you have to do to get on there? You hit like. That's it? Yes. So, that being said, we have to turn these cameras off and eat the rest of this. This is just absolutely, I mean, how can you get any more simple than that? But this is just absolutely amazing. It's so simple, so yes. easy, but so absolutely wonderful. I'm gonna get every berry out of the fridge we have and make them. I think what you're you think? right. I think we need to. We got raspberries too. <laughs> we do. We should have mixed that up. Ooh, and blueberries. Anyway, because our half hour's up, it's all about good times, good friends, really good eats. We'll see you next week on a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Yummy. I'm gonna eat all this right now.
we have been catering for a lot of years and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this it's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Mm -hmm.